Okay, so I mean, in the last two videos, I have talked about uh, radon measure. Uh, so radon measure is a measure which is defined on the Borel sigma algebra, and which satisfies some nice properties. I mean, which are desirable. For example, it should be finite on compact sets. Uh, then outer regularity and inner regularity and all those things. Uh, so, so I just want to emphasize how the elements of the Borel sigma algebra look like. So, since by definition the Borel sigma algebra, so if my set is X, that is some topological space, then the Borel sigma algebra is by definition uh, the sigma algebra generated by uh, the open sets that are defined by the topology. So it will contain all possible all possible unions and intersections uh, of open and closed sets, right? Because I'm generating the sigma algebra. So since I already have the open sets, by taking complement, I will end up in closed sets. And then I have to take countable unions and countable intersections. So maybe I should write here, uh, the countable. Countable thing is important because uh, uh, in sigma algebra, you have to take countable unions. Countable union and countable intersections of open and closed set uh, will be uh, contained inside your uh, inside your Borel sigma algebra, and then and then on that Borel sigma algebra you have a radon measure. So the measure is finite on on compact sets. So maybe I I have all those slides here, so I can go back to those slides. Maybe. Um, so yeah, so these three important properties. So compact set has finite measure, and then measure of any Borel set can be approximated from outside by open sets, and measure of any open set can be approximated from inside by compact sets. So this is radon measure. Okay. So so you have this topological space X, then uh, you have a measure on that, which is a radon measure uh, on the Borel sigma algebra. So this is the setup. Okay. So now uh, we will be interested uh, in the space, in the following space. So let me write down uh, what will be uh, the space of our interest. Uh, to create a new page. Yeah. So, yeah. So the space of our interest will be uh, <clears throat> CCX. So now what is the meaning of that? So when I write this capital C, this capital C means I'm looking at all continuous functions on X. And in the subscript, when I write C, that means my functions are compactly supported. So this is the collection of all functions from X to R. So right now I am only looking at uh, real value functions. I mean, you can very well talk about complex valued, even some RN valued functions also, but but right now, let me uh, restrict myself only to uh, real valued functions. So when when I write CCX, I mean the real valued functions such that the support is compact. Support of F is compact. So basically, I'm looking at compactly supported uh, continuous functions on X. 
I can talk about continuous functions on X because X is a topological space. And uh, since the put of F is a subset of X, I can also talk about, I can also demand that support of F be, uh, to be compact. Okay, so now, now suppose you have this function. Uh, so then there is a, uh, there is a very natural way to construct a um, linear functional on this space. So first of all, just observe that it's a vector space, right? I mean, it's very clear that it's a vector space. If you take uh, two functions with compact support, then a plus g will also have compact support. And then if you take any scalar multiple of any function, that will also have compact support. So it's very clear that this is a vector space. This collection of functions with compact support it forms a uh, vector space under pointwise addition and pointwise uh, multiplication of things. So this is a vector space. Now I'm saying that there is a very natural way to construct a linear functional on the vector space. In other words, um, an element of the dual of this space. So what is that? What is that construction? So that is very um, natural. Let me use this. And, uh, yeah. So uh, suppose this X has a, so suppose, suppose this X has a, has a radon measure on it. I mean, you know what it means precisely. I'm, I'm, I'm not being too much pedantic. You know what is the meaning of this statement that X is a radon measure. So uh, strictly speaking, on X, I have a sigma algebra. And then on that sigma algebra, I have some function, which is my radon measure. So in short, we write X as a radon measure. So X as a radon measure on it. Uh, then if I define this map, let's say, uh, let me denote this map by phi from CCX to R. So I want to define a linear functional. So that means I, I, have, I have to give a map from this CCX to R. So what is the map? I take a function F. I take a function F and I send it to uh, integration over x f d mu. So that is that is clearly a linear function. So whenever I have a uh, measure on the space, this is a very natural construct. This will be a, a linear function. Uh, so, uh, I was just thinking that maybe we can do one thing. Uh, let's try to, uh, try to estimate this integral and see, uh, if this, um, I mean, if the, if this, uh, output value, uh, uh has some special property. So. So let me just, uh, yeah, let me see what happens. Uh, so this is integral f d mu, integrating over the whole space. And then, uh, uh, so uh, this is given already that support of f is compact, right? My support is compact. So let's say this support is some k. So that means this integral reduces to just the integral over k of f d mu. Okay. So suppose I want to estimate uh, the size of this integral. So I will take the absolute value. 
now uh, by basic um, triangle inequality i can say this is less than or equal to integral over k mod f uh, d mu uh, and then uh, okay uh, i mean right now i am assuming that by measure is not a sign measure i mean probably some of you know that there is a concept called sign measure where measure is allowed to have negative values but we are not talking about sign measure i'm just talking about um this positive uh, normal measure so because i just want to avoid putting a mod here so let's not worry about that so this is bounded by mod f du and then since f is a uh, continuous function and the support is support is some compact set you know that if uh, has some maximum value right i mean uh, the the range of f is also bounded because uh, the support is compact and the range of a continuous function on a compact set has to be bounded so this is uh, this is less than or equal to uh, some some constant uh, which probably depends on k uh, then integral over k d mu and integral over k d mu is nothing but um, the, the the measure of this um, uh, this measure of this set k right because if i just integrate integrate 1 uh, integrate 1 over some set what i get is just the measure right so and since um, I know that my radon measure is finite on compact set, so obviously this is also finite. So this, uh, so, so the map we defined is uh, obviously uh, well defined. This will give you a finite, uh, well defined real number, and which is um, uh, bounded by some, bounded by some constant times the measure of the set k. Obviously, this constant can depend on k. It can very well depend on k. Okay, so these are linear functional on 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 this space. And uh, uh, okay, so what are some other properties of this p? So I guess this is a positive linear functional, right? So what do you mean by a positive linear function? So let me uh, say that. So, so I is called a positive linear functional. I is called a positive linear functional. Uh, if I takes positive functions to positive real number, if I of if is greater than or equal to zero, whenever uh, if is greater than or equal to zero, so uh, if you take a non-negative function, I will take it to a non-negative non-negative real number. So, so, so the map we define this map that this f goes to integral f d mu. You can easily see that this is a positive linear function. Because if f is positive, then integral f d mu will also be positive because uh, because we are not talking about sine measure or anything like that. We are just talking about just uh, normal measure, uh, which is uh, uh, which takes only non-negative real numbers possibly infinity but um, yeah okay. so these are positive linear function so now one might ask that uh, is that all is that the description of all uh, positive linear functional So what I'm trying to say is that 
if if phi is any uh, positive linear functional on uh, the space ccx does it have to be of this form that it will be given by integration against some measure on the space yeah, possibly right on measure so that is an interesting question right and uh, interestingly this is true under some special topological property of the space x so that is a very interesting thing so that is our goal i mean that will take us to uh, go into what is known as uh, the Ries representation theorem which is a very famous and powerful theorem i mean it uh, it is used in many places in many ways uh, so, so mostly people who study functional analysis they're interested in uh, dual space of this kind of spaces so here we are just looking at the dual of the space ccx so there are other kinds of spaces also for example let me write down a few uh, okay i think i can't add any more space you have to go to a new white paper Okay, that's good. Okay, let me fix the color. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so, uh, so. So I was talking about this CCA. So there are also other kind of spaces. For example, you can look at uh, this thing called uh, C0x. So which is basically a continuous function on x which vanish at infinity. Which vanish at infinity. And uh, what is the meaning of vanishing at infinity? So vanishing of infinity, vanishing at infinity means that uh, outside a compact set, the values taken by the function becomes very small. That is the meaning of vanishing at infinity. And also there are spaces like CBX. So these are basically space of all continuous bounded functions. And analysts are interested in studying dual of these spaces. So people want to study these duals. So these are important objects in analysis. So right now we are interested in, in this space, this dual. Sometimes, uh, when you want to, uh, so the so the philosophy is like this. Some sometimes, if you want to uh, understand the vector space V, uh, you better understand the space V dual. So sometimes, understanding V dual uh, gives you uh, many information on the on the structure of V. So that's why people are interested in studying these duals. So right now we are interested in this space, this dual of this CCX, and uh, a special kind of dual, which takes positive functions to positive real numbers. We are, so we are interested in, uh, I mean, strictly speaking, we are interested in um, a proper subset of this. Proper subset of this thing, this dual. So which are basically positive linear functions. So, so what is our question? So let me let me just uh, formulate our question in a in a precise language. So this is your space X, and then I'm looking at all compactly supported continuous functions. Then I have some positive linear functional phi. Now the question is, uh, so can you can you cook up 
कैन यू कुक अप अ रेड ऑन मेजर रेड ऑन मेजर ऑन एक्स सच दैट दिस फी ऑफ एफ इज गिवन बाय इज गिवन बाय दिस इंटीग्रल so that's what that's what we were asking right i mean i know that integral f dm is a positive linear function functional but now we are what we are asking is that is it true that any positive linear functional is of this form that is it is given by integration against some radon measure so that is a question i hope you understand it correctly that is a question and uh, uh so unfortunately this is not true for any kind of spaces but there is a there is a large there is a large class of topological spaces where this holds so what is that space so that is very uh, important to understand uh, so so there is something called uh locally compact space so if you are not already familiar with uh, this this terminology from point set topology so in that case i will just uh, discuss about this a bit so what is a what is a locally compact space so obviously you can guess that it may not be compact but if you if you concentrate on a neighborhood of a point then it will be compact so as a whole as a whole the space may not be compact but every point every point has a compact neighborhood every point has a compact neighborhood so that is the definition of locally compact so for example if you take the whole real line if you take the whole real line under the standard topology you know that obviously it is not compact because it's not bounded so it cannot be compact in the, in the standard topology but if you concentrate on the neighborhood of a point so obviously this point has a compact neighborhood you can put a small close bounded interval around that point so locally around each point it looks like a compact space i mean it is exactly a compact space so that is what meant by this statement that every point is a compact neighborhood so these are locally compact space. so now if my space is locally compact and uh, and obviously hausdorff i mean hausdorffness is a very mild condition everyone everyone is generally interested in hausdorff spaces because non hausdorff spaces are uh, not very uh, famous i mean people do not discuss about non hausdorff spaces that much uh, we also constructed our radon measure on a host of space because in non host of spaces i mean things can become very ugly so so to begin with we defined radon measure only on host of spaces and now i am adding this condition locally compact so in short i will uh, say this is uh, this x is a um lch it's a lch space by lch uh, space i mean locally compact host okay so x is a lch space and then comes the the main theorem the ries representation theorem so actually there are many theorems uh, by ries 
uh, which are very similar to this, but which which are not exactly this theorem. So if you want to be if you want to be precise, then you should say uh, you should involve uh, the name of other two people. So they are they are also very famous. This Markov and Kabutan. So this is uh, so these are really three people. This is Markov Kaputani representation theorem, and exactly this theorem this uh, theorem talks about what we want to discuss. Today. Now, what is the statement of the theorem? So it says that if uh, if i is a positive linear functional <clears throat> on on the cca then there is a unique there is a unique radon measure there is a unique radon measure on x such that there is a unique radon measure on a such that Yeah, sorry for the interruption. Uh, says that this uh, this linear functional i f is given by this integral. Isn't it beautiful? I mean, any such positive linear functional. Uh, corresponds to some some measure. There is a unique radon measure. So, uh, so in, in more more advanced setting, people talk about measure in this language. So for them, uh, measure is sometimes is just a just a positive linear functional on some space. So in in some more advanced context, you will. You may come up with some notion of, let's say, some R n valued measure. We know that normally measure is a function from x to r and so on, right? Or let's say r or c or something complex measure or real valued measure or maybe some sign measure. So people can also talk about this R n valued measure. So by R n valued measure, we mean they will mean that it's a continuous linear functional on this space, on this space, the C C X R N. So this is basically continuous function from X to R N with compact support. Then dual of this space is uh, is, is the the element of the dual of this space is is the R N value measure. So in more what I'm trying to say in a more general context, I mean sometimes. Sometimes measure is defined as a positive linear functional on some space. Anyways, I mean that is not important for our discussion, but it is important to uh, realize that uh, the linear functional on some space corresponds to some uh, some measure on the space, and that is very that is very deep, I think. Okay, so yeah, and uh, then what will happen? Then uh, yeah, then uh, this this uh, so this thing will have some nice properties. So I will come to that. Uh, 
so so let me introduce uh, some notation which will be important <clears throat> so this is our uh, okay so suppose u is open in a u is suppose open in a and uh, if is a if is a compactly supported continuous function on a then I use this notation uh, if related to u, if if lies between zero and one, and uh, the support is contained in the open set, open set u, the support is contained in. Okay, so now by by um, by by Ries representation theorem, you know that your linear functional positive linear functional i is given by uh, integration against some measure. Uh, so basically, what is the relation exact relation between uh, this the measure and the integral? So can you estimate the can you estimate uh, okay, yeah, so let me write down the statement, uh, then it will become clear what I'm trying to say. So measure of any open set is actually given by Supremum over i f, where f is a continuous linear functional compactly supported, and f is uh, related to u. This is for all u opening x. So, yeah. Uh, Right. So now, uh, so this is basically saying that your uh, your measure of u can be approximated by this i f by i f if f is related to u. Okay. So actually, this should be intuitive. So so just let me say why. Why this is intuitive? I mean, intuitively, why you should expect this, expect this result. Uh, so let me let me draw some picture. So this is x and this is your q. And uh, okay, so let me think. What can I draw? So yeah. So suppose I draw some some graph like this. Okay, I, I, I suppose I draw some graph like this. So this is uh, this is this is real value, and this is the this is the height one. This height is basically one. Okay. So the function is varying between zero and one, and support is contained in u. So it's like a it's like a bump. It's like a bump sitting inside supported inside you uh, and uh, except uh, except near the end points it is a uh, constant constant one function maybe you can also draw some function like this it it, it should not be i mean it, it should not be it might not be some something which is a constant one in some middle portion it, it, it can be something like this also I mean, all, 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 
all 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 of this kind of functions will qualify uh, to satisfy this condition that f is related to u because support of f is contained in u and f is taking values between 0 and 1 and um, and um, so that is the thing and uh, and then what then uh, and then you also know that this mu uh, of u the measure of the set u can be written as integration over u of the integrator function on u d mu right because, because measure of any set is given by the integral integrator uh, integral of the integrator function on that set. So the integral one, integral one u d, d mu. So the integrator function, let me draw the integrator function separately. So this is, this is your integrator function. This is constant one. This, if you take this, my drawing is very bad, but you can you can understand what I'm saying. I mean, this constant, which take the constant value one on whole of u, that is my indicator function. So you can see that I mean, if I if I integrate this constant one function, that is, I I look at the area beneath the Beneath, beneath this orange graph that is almost equal to almost equal to the area under this curve this f curve this f that i have drawn so you can approximate this whole area by taking this f or this f or this f and uh, so basically, if you if your approximation gets better and better, you can see that the supremum of all these areas. I mean, if you take f here, then if you take f here, then you take f here. So you vary your f in this way to make your approximation better to approach the constant one function. Then the the corresponding area also will get approximated better and better. So this thing, this, uh, this measure is basically the supremum over, over this thing. So it's like you are, I mean, you are, you are approximating from below. If is less than or equal to one inside you, so you are approximating from below at, and, and you are you are lifting the approximation upwards to, I mean, to get closer to the full area. So maybe hopefully, I mean, uh, you will be able to, uh, I mean, draw some accurate graph. I mean, using some accurate, you can accurately write down some function to describe this phenomenon. So I think you have to take something like this may be. So this is your h and this is your u. So you have to take this kind of functions. So for example, you, you take this thing first. Okay, then you take this thing for this thing second. So this is your first function, this is your second function, and then this is your third function okay so basically you are allowing more and more values in the range to take the value one that is my that is my goal like actually so all of these functions are are related to u it has to be it has to lie between zero and one and the support has to be contained in u so this way you go upwards to approximate the constant one function better and better so obviously you can see if you take the if you take the if you take the integral of f and then you take the supremum as f varies 
then you will approach this uh, this integral one d mu right but integral one d mu over u uh, is nothing but measure of q so, so that is what this statement is is saying it has to be the supremum of this thing so uh, you can always uh, motivate yourself by looking at some basic examples motivate or recall like if you forget something you can recall that what should be the statement that is the main point here and and similarly the other statement is that for let me write down for compact sets Okay, so now let me uh, write it down for for compact set. For compact set, what is happening? So this mu k is given by infinite minimum of i of a. Where well, f varies over as usual CCA and f greater than or equal to indicator on k. This chi k means indicator of k. So maybe I can just write using this notation 1k. I don't have to use complicated notation. f greater than or equal to indicator on k. This is the thing. This is also very intuitive why this should happen. Again, you can draw some picture. This is A and this is your compact set K. So now if you have uh, if you have some function like if you have some this kind of function. So first of all, what is mu k? So mu k is just integral over k indicator on k d mu, right? Integral of indicator on k d mu over k. So basically, if I just take the constant function, um, constant function, uh, on constant function, constant one function on k. This is this is suppose this is the constant. Take the constant value one on k. If I take that function, then if I integrate that function, so I will get this area. I will get this area and this will that will be my measure of k and uh, and I am varying f over this over all possible f such that f greater than equal to indicator of k. So for example, this function I have drawn this is greater than equal to indicator of k. Similarly, you can take this kind of functions, this kind of functions. This kind of function. So now, what is happening? We are approximating from the upper side, from the upper portion of the upper portion of the constant function one. So we are approximating from up. So this is my first f. Then this is my f. Then this is my f. I'm trying to approach the constant function one from above. So correspondingly, the area under the graph will also approach this area which is the area under the constant function one so basically if i vary over all possible a which is greater than or equal to my indicator on k and i, I look at the infinimum i look at the infinimum because i can get very close to this i can get as close as possible by 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 narrowing the function very rapidly to zero outside k. So within k, I can take the constant function one and outside k, I can take the function rapidly down to zero. Right. So in that way, I will 
be very close to the desired area this area so in the in the formal language i, I have to take the infinitesimal or all such f then i will get the measure of k so that is the that is the uh, intuition behind why this statement should be true so this is the full uh, full statement of the ries representation theorem uh, so uh, let me show you the statement from the book of foland i mean the neat and clean statement in in one in one shot so let me just uh, show you that yeah hopefully it's visible clearly uh this is the this is the this is the full fledged description of what is uh, how this mu can be estimated so this is the ries markov cartan representation theorem that whenever you have some positive linear functional on ccx that means what that means this is really an element of the dual of ccx we are studying the dual of ccx and some particular kind of dual which takes positive function to positive real numbers and those kind of uh, linear functional is actually given by this integral actually given by this this kind of integrals the integral f dmu if is exactly integral f dmu so that and also there's a unique this is also important there's a unique radon uh, and i think uh, the jla statement would be uh, for for if the i mean if the linear function is not positive it's arbitrary linear function uh, then i think you may you may cook up some unique um, uh, sign measure so instead of measure you have to take sign measure probably probably you have to check on that but i guess so uh, whatever right now let's let's only focus on or positive linear functions and those are given by some radon measure this is exactly this integral and then as i said we should expect this to happen and this is what is happening that this measure of the open set is supremum over all of these integrals all of these integrals where f is uh, related to u so that means f is taking value between 0 and 1 and support of f is containing u and similarly the measure of the compact set is given by infinitesimal over all of these integrals where f is greater than or equal to integrator on k so this is a full statement so uh, so so if you are interested i mean you, you can look at the proof from this book Uh, maybe uh, in future if i get some time i will discuss the proof so if i discuss i will obviously motivate the proof i mean how should how one should uh, progress uh, to give the proof in a i mean step by step way and uh, and uh, one thing i want to emphasize is that i this to this to equalities are very important i mean these two equalities itself give you hint about how to start the proof how to start the proof because uh, i mean to start with you do not have any measure and you do not have any integral you only know this ifs you are only given this positive linear function and you have to cook up some unique radon measure and how to start cooking up that measure this thing gives you the hint exactly how to cook out the measure so basically whenever you have this u you define mu u to be like this you define mu u to be like this because you already know if so i can define this quantity the supremum of if as if is related to u so you define u in this uh, you define the measure of u in this way 
module with some minor modifications that you can you can see if you go through the proof. So you start the proof by defining mu in this way. That is the important catch. And uh, similarly for uh, for compact sets also, you can define the measure in this way and you can proceed. And then you show that this mu is really a measure. And uh, that involves a concept of uh, outer measure also, if you already know what it is. Outer measure is also an important concept. Because uh, in some space, what happens is that you can't define a sigma algebra on the whole power set. So that it, it, it uh, so that you can put a measure on it. But sometimes there is something called outer measure, which can be defined on full power set. So outer measure is a very useful concept. So if you go through the proof, I mean, you will see that this, uh, these concepts are actually used in many places. So this is very interesting. Yeah. So I hope at least you uh, understand like what's going on. Uh, what is the statement of the theorem and what, what it really means. And this is a very powerful thing and I think in physics also in many places this is used because uh, in physical scenarios uh, the measure, especially probability measure, uh, captures the idea of mass density in a very uh, precise way. So in physics also, I have seen many places where uh, this uh, uh, representation theorem uh, naturally pops up. So this is very interesting and useful. Okay, so hopefully in future, I will discuss the proof, but uh, yeah, so for this video, that's it.